Hello, my old school soul food family. Chef Jeffrey back with another video. All right, y'all, I'm doing something. I don't think I ever showed y'all again. I got so much recipes, y'all. I be cooking sometimes. I say, I never showed them how to make this. This is something, you know, it's the fall of the year. A lot of football going on. People hanging out, having little sports parties. And this is a go-to at my sports party, y'all. This is my twist on beef and panadas. This is something that we made on our job. We used to make three or four hundred of these at a time. And uh, this is a little twist on it. Now, some of this stuff, I'm not going to add to it. Sometimes I put raisins in mine. Sometimes I put uh, potatoes. But this I simplified for my friends and family that come over to watch football. And I just use onions. Sometimes I put bell peppers in it. I got onions, garlic, a little Camino, a little chili powder. I put a little brown sugar in it for sweetness and some cheese I do, jack, a mozzarella cheese, whatever cheese I got. I got cheddar cheese I fold in at the end. Of course, ground beef. You know, I have my own beef ground. I got some nice fresh ground beef here. I, I had processed a couple of months ago. You know, it lasts me all throughout the fall of the year. So I ain't got to worry about going to the store, buying no, no kind of beef this year. Buy it till next summer. So, anyway, very simple how I do this, y'all. First thing I'm going to do, I'm going to get my onion sauteed. Y'all know I don't like crunchy onions in anything. So, I got my skillet heating up over here. And we're going to get these onions sauteed off. A little, little garlic. I'm going to put a little garlic in here. It is so easy to put together, y'all. So simple, especially if you use the, a little garlic in there. Especially if you use the... The empanada dough already cut up. That's what we use at my job. We bought the, we didn't buy much stuff already cooked, already made, but when it came to empanada uh, dough, when we made so many at a time, we bought the, uh, the circles already cut up. So we're gonna get that going a little bit while y'all watching that. Opening up my ground meat here. Get it all out of here. All right. I got a question for y'all. A lot of people just make y'all think now. See this ground meat right here? I just took out the package. See that ground meat I just took out the package? How many people wash their ground meat off in the sink? Or uh, wash it off, you know, really, really scrub the... How many people y'all, how many y'all wash your ground meat when you take it out of the package at the store? Of course, I know this is spray. How many people y'all do that? The majority of people are gonna say they don't soak their ground meat and wash it when they open it at the store. But if you, uh, how many people would take this form of meat and if it's in the shoulder, if it's a roast beef or something, you would wash it, right? So why don't you wash the ground meat? It's the same exact meat as the, as the shoulder or the, uh, or the top round that you buy in the store, it's the same meat. If you don't wash your ground meat, why you wash the top round? If you wash the top round, why you don't wash the ground meat? I ask these people this question all the time. Some people just overthink a lot of things when they cook it. So anyway, just a little FYI. All right, we're gonna put our ground meat in here. Now I ask people the same thing about chicken. Some people say, oh, I wash my chicken breast when I buy it in the store. Okay, they take that same chicken breast that you washing so much, and they turn it into ground chicken. When you buy ground chicken in the store, do you wash it in the sink and scrub it and put vinegar and all that in it? Do you do that? If you wash your ground chicken breast, why don't you wash the ground chicken that you ground? Why don't you wash the ground chicken? I ask people this all the time. That's why I think, I think people overthink sometimes. <laughs> and a lot of times, a lot of the professionals tell you, I'm going to do a separate video on this. I'm just giving y'all some food for thought. When you wash your meat, you're doing more of a damage to your area and to the meat than a, than a, uh, and I'll do a separate video on that on why. A lot of that is talked down through the years. Oh, you should wash your meat. You should wash this. A lot of people has been taught that throughout the years that it's unhealthy not to wash your meat but it, i'm gonna do a video and go into detail and show you why are you do you people really know why they're washing the meat 
Why are they washing the chicken? Why are they washing the pork off? Why are they washing the beef off? Why are you doing that? Because somebody told you you're supposed to do it? Or you know the scientific reason why? So, anyway. Back to the meat here. Okay, and we're going to cook the ground this meat off here. Till it's completely browned off. Nice, freshly ground meat. That I didn't wash. <laughs> Alrighty. We're gonna get that brown off completely. And y'all see when I this is why I like to have my meat already freshly ground for me. As you can see, it's not a lot of grease in the bottom of this. It's like a 90-10 blend. It has a lot of flavor in it, but not a lot of fat. It has more meat than fat. And you can see by the skillet, it's not a lot of I, I, I won't have to drain this at all, y'all. To, to what I'm saying is I don't have to drain my ground meat. When I make spaghetti and make meat sauce, anything like that, because my meat don't have a lot of grease in it. It has fat in it, perfect fat ratio, but no grease. So anyway, we're gonna get all this brown off here. Yeah, I ain't have to go to a commercial break, y'all. See that? No commercial break here. Now, while that's browning off, we're gonna add our aromatics. I'm gonna add a little chili powder and Camino to this. Not a lot, y'all. So that stuff can be overpowering. This is just how we made it at the job. Smells amazing. I might add a little bit more paprika. I like to add chili powder. Some people like to add paprika. But I'm gonna add a little bit more chili powder. I added Camino already. And I add a little, you add, sometimes we add raisins in it, y'all. Some people add raisins, some people add peas, some people add potatoes. So there's no really science. Hold on, y'all. A little bit more chili powder, give it a little bit more color. Like I say, you can add uh, paprika if you want to. Now, I'm going to add a little brown sugar to this. Yeah, it's going to have a little sweetness to it with the saltiness. And I'm going to add some salt and pepper to this just a second. Now, why some people add raisins to, uh, to theirs to give that sweetness that they need. I love empanadas, y'all. I can eat a dozen of these at a time. And guess how many I'm making a day? I'm making a dozen of them. Okay, we're going to add a little salt and pepper. And that's Salting the sweetness balance, y'all. It's gonna be absolutely amazing. So we're gonna cook this down here. Oh yeah, look at this, y'all. Look at this goodness here. I know I got more meat than I need. All I do, y'all, I freeze what's left over that I don't use. Okay, we're gonna taste this here while it's cooking here. Oh my God, mm-hmm. Nice little kick from the chili powder. The smoking is from the Camino. I'm gonna turn this off. Got that salt in it, and then that little hint of sweetness from the brown sugar just balances it off. Now, last thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna add a little cheddar cheese in Kind of fold this in. Kind of fold this in here. And we're gonna let this cool just a little, y'all. And then we're gonna put it in our uh, empanada shell. See that? Tell me that ain't gonna be some goodness here. And the cheese do two things. Of course, it makes it cheesy. But it's a binder too, to the ground meat. It's gonna have the ground meat kind of stick together when you put it on your, put in your filling, put in your filling, put in your, in your dough there. So anyway, y'all, we're gonna step off, let this cool a little. We'll be right back to fill up the dough. Be right back. All right, y'all, we are back here. All right, let this cool a little. Now, I got some empanada dough here. You can buy this. I get this at Fiesta. But most stores have it. H-E-B has it in where the 
the uh, section where all the Spanish food is, ethnic food in the freezer, you can get it. And you can fry this or bake it, y'all. But I'm just to bake this in the oven. And my job, we did both ways. Depending on how big of a hurry we was in. Good thing about these things, y'all, they already cut. As you can see, they already cut in little rounds. You ain't got to worry about cutting them. None of that. They separated in the little plastic there. Let's just put them all out here, y'all. I'm doing all 12 of them. And they're all separated. And these are the same ones we use on my, on my job. Goya. You know, Goya is a big company for, for, you know, for Spanish products. And all I'm going to do, y'all, I'm going to put them out here on the on my counter here. I say you ain't got to roll them out. You ain't got to do nothing. And what I like to do, I'm going to put a little egg wash in mine to make sure they stick together. Y'all already know how I like to do it. It's like glue. And when I bake them, I'm going to make sure they come out good. Then I'm going to put some egg wash on top too. All egg wash is a couple of eggs in there. Little meat, little water, milk, and then we're gonna put the filling right in the middle here. And let's see what a cheese does. It helps bind the ground meat together. That's what the cheese does. And you can use whatever cheese you want, y'all. I just happen to use cheddar. I've used Jack before. I use mozzarella. But you want a cheese that help bind it together. Okay, y'all see that? Now, all I'm gonna do, fold it over just like this. And I'm gonna take my fork here. And you're gonna pinch it down with the fork. That's all I'm gonna do, y'all. See that? Put it on my sheet pan here I got over here behind me. Let me show you another one here and then I'm gonna step off, get them all finished up. It's very important y'all put that egg wash in there so it'll glue together because you don't want your filling to come out of there. Like a meat pie, that's all it is. I call it my Spanish meat pie, but I'm telling y'all, I can eat a dozen of these. That's how many I'm making a day. A dozen. Because it's 12 in a package. Okay, y'all, get these next three done here. Then we're gonna step off. So we're gonna finish them up. Like I said, make sure you get them good and mashed down. And the job, we had a machine. Not a machine, but it's a, a contraption that you put the dough in it and you flip it and it automatically seals it. Of course, the people that do this big time, they probably have a machine, you just throw the dough in it and the machine does all the work. I got one more here. Get this last one done here. Like I said, I'll step off, finish these up, then I'll show you the final process before you put them in the oven. All right, y'all, we'll be right back for the final process. All right, y'all, we are back here. All right, y'all, I got them all on the pan here. I messed one up there, y'all. I don't care, I'm still gonna eat it. All I'm going to do, y'all, I'm going to just brush it with an egg wash here. Give it a nice shine here. That's going to give it a nice, pretty shine. And these going to take about 20 to 25 minutes, y'all. That's all I'm going to do. There we go. 20, 25 minutes, 375 degrees. And we'll be back and we'll show you how I eat them, what sauce I use, and all that stuff. So, old school beef and panada, an easy, quick way. We'll be right back. All right, y'all, we are back here. Empanadas out of the oven. Look at this, y'all. Nice golden brown, golden brown underneath as well. Got that nice shine on them. 
course, y'all know it's <laughs> it's very, very, very hot right now. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna step out, let them cool, get them plated up here. And we're gonna come back, and I know these good, y'all. I'm telling you, I got the dozen here. I can say I ain't the whole dozen. They that good. So anyway, y'all, <laughs> we'll be right back. All right, y'all, we are back here. Empanadas and cool down just a little while I can handle them. Look at that, y'all. That's how, that's how we do it. And my parties in my house, that's how we do it. Like I say, this is how we do it. So anyway, let me get the one right up the front. Just call it my name. Look at that. How pretty that is. I love this empanada dough. See how pretty those are. Nice and golden brown on the bottom. Uh, another thing you can use, you can use pie dough for this, of course. But puff pastry is amazing for this also, y'all. If you want to, if you don't, if you can't find empanada dough. Okay, let's break into these bad boys. I'm going to be fancy here. We're going to keep it fancy. Keep it classy. Look at that, y'all. Let me get me some. Let me get one covered with more meat here. Look at that meat there. That meat in there. Like I said, I like to dip mine. I can double dip today. It's all me today. It's all me. Look at that. Look at that shit. Going in. Mmm. 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 Mm. Oh, wow. So good, y'all. Mmm. Turn the sauce on there. Mmm. Mm. Look at that. Another bite. Mmm. Wow. I'm gonna tell y'all the spiciness from the chili powder, Camino, the little smokiness from the chili powder, salt and pepper. And got that little sweetness coming from the brown sugar. A perfect balance of flavors, y'all. Absolutely perfect balance of flavors here. And like I said, you can also freeze these as well. And you can also fry them instead of baking them. If you want to do the non-healthy route. But that's okay. right. Very simple. Very easy to make. Y'all see how you got made these. Nothing to it. So anyway, y'all, let me close this video out. If you like the video, please share, please comment, please subscribe, please follow my other social media account, Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, Twitter, Twitch TV, Pinterest, OldSchoolSoulFood.com. Remember the hashtag 2023, just show some kindness. Old School Soul Food. Until next time, have a blessed Old School Soul Food day, and I will see y'all in the next video. Love y'all. Bye.